My wife and some of my friends tell me I'm a complete idiot. I know I can be a little inflexible at times, but an asshole? Never. Growing up, I was always taught to do the right thing, to be honest and ethical. Sometimes I think that I may be too inflexible when it comes to ethics and doing the right thing. I guess looking back on what I did, I wasn't honest or ethical, but I recognize the momentary insanity. Heck, this guilty plea frees hardened criminals or reduces their sentences, doesn't it? This should work for me, too. Now, have I got your attention? Well, let me tell you the story of how I ruined my dorky ex-friend's marriage and almost ruined mine. And Eddie Howell and his parents moved near my house just before I joined the Navy. His wife Janice was a year younger than us, and my wife Janice's sister was three years younger. I didn't know Eddie very well until I came home from the Navy. By then, he had married Janice and was very happy. I dated Janice once or twice before joining the Navy, but we knew we weren't right for each other. I even took her out a couple of times when I was home on vacation before she married Eddie. I think this is where the problems started between me and Eddie. A few years after they got married, he found pictures of Janice and me in one of her photo albums. There were some photos from when I took her dancing at a local club. It was obvious that we were having fun. The photos showed us laughing and me hugging her with one arm. Eddie also found some photos of me in uniform, accompanying Janice to dances when I was on leave. In the photo, I was hugging her again, and she looked very happy. She was wearing a low-cut dress with a very short skirt. I still remember this dress. I liked it. I remember that night very well. She didn't wear a bra, and every time I danced with her or when she came close to me to talk to me, I could see her little hard bulges on her breasts. Damn, she still turned me on no matter how old we were. I could only dream of sleeping with her if I had the chance, but I would never put myself in that position because I love my wife and would never do anything that would lead to her loss. Well, let's get back to our story. That evening we had a couple of beers, and I have to admit that I had sex with her before driving her home. Heck, I was a sailor, and she probably wanted to try the product. I know we were both horny as hell, and as far as I remember, she had a great time with me. I remember that evening, then I walked her to the house. We agreed to meet the next evening and go dancing. The next day in the evening, I rang the doorbell. Her little sister Roxy opened the door. Her face was blotchy and flushed. The eyes turned red and tears flowed from the corners. When Roxy opened the door, I smiled and said, Hi, Roxy. Is Janice ready? Roxy glared at me and turned away from the door. She never answered me, but shouted up the stairs, Jen, your boyfriend is here. She stomped loudly down the hall, her little butt swaying from side to side. When Janice came downstairs, I was still standing in the open door. I wasn't actually invited in and didn't know what to do, so I just stood at the bottom of the stairs and waited. I asked Janice what Roxy's problem was. She smiled at me and said, Oh, she's angry with me because I'm leaving tonight. I didn't get all my work done and she has some calves to feed that I had to take care of. Mom made me promise to do all the work tomorrow to make up for it, so I don't know what her problem is. That evening, I took Janice to a social dance. She specifically asked me to wear a white uniform. I have to admit that we looked really good in that photo. Damn, I don't know how many girls I was filming with that night. Many of my parents' friends asked me to pose with them, as well as some other girls I knew when I was in school. I really had a lot of fun that evening. They proposed to me several times. I was even surprised by this. Three married ladies made it clear to me that they would be happy to receive me at their home while their husbands were at work. They said they wanted to show me how much they appreciated my service. I understood what service they would like to appreciate. I've never visited with a married woman, but I tried a couple of other ladies who wanted to show their appreciation. After I returned home from the Navy, I went to college through the GI program. I farmed on my old home property while I went to school and lived 25 miles from campus. I went to it every day. My first class was at 8 a.m., and I almost always finished before noon. Since most college students hated early classes, I didn't meet many eligible women during my college career. I sometimes had lab work on Tuesdays and Thursdays that lasted until noon, so I met some people there, but no one special. In any case, between working on the farm and studying, I didn't have much time for a social life due to the fact that I lived far away from college. 
I used to go to Wheatland or Wilson's Mill to spend evenings by the pool if I didn't have to study or work on the farm. Many times in the summer I would go to lunch and play dominoes for an hour or two with one of the old people. Again, this did not help public life much. There were very few women who went to the pool hall, and those who did were sluts. I was ready for a permanent woman who would be devoted. You know, I wanted to get married, not date. The few women I dated in college were simply not my type. I was visiting one of the guys on a Friday night at the pool hall, and he mentioned Roxy. I haven't thought about her for ages. Damn it, I didn't even think about Janice. This was before cell phones were invented, so I went to the back of the pool room and used the payphone to call Roxy. On the spur of the moment, I decided to ask her out. To my surprise, she agreed to go on a date with me. We dated for the rest of the summer and became very close. I was falling in love with her. One evening we couldn't decide what to do and she asked it if I would mind taking her to see her sister Janice and her husband. I didn't even hear that Janice got married until I started dating Roxy. We got to Janice's house and I learned that she had married Eddie. He was always witty, but not that obnoxious. He was a little scruffy and reminded me of a TV actor named Eddie Haskell from the old show Leave It to Beaver. Eddie and I got along well, and we all had fun together during this visit. After a couple of drinks, he and I got along really well. We became closer. I would say that we became friends. After that, Roxy and I became quite frequent guests at her sister's house. The problem I had with Eddie the asshole started about eight years after Roxy and I got married. My solution to this problem put me in the asshole category for the rest of my life. One day, Eddie came to our house. I could tell he was angry when he walked in. I asked, what's the matter, Eddie? Eddie came right up to my face and started screaming. You're an asshole, he said. I found several photographs of you with my wife. I want you to keep your ass away from Janice. Can you hear me? Wow, dude. I've never been with your wife unless you or Roxy were there with me. What's the big deal, dude? Shitty asshole. I have pictures and I'm telling you to fuck off right now. I've seen you hug her and flirt with her when we're together, and I don't like it. I don't want you to try to get closer to her like you did before. Eddie turned and stomped it out of our house. He was so angry that he burned rubber as he drove away in his car. Roxy came into the living room and stood next to me as I looked through the open door. She asked Ed, What was all that about Janice? I have no idea. Eddie burst in and said he had pictures of me and Janice and wanted me to stay away from her. What do you mean when you say he has pictures of you and Janice? What were you two doing, Jerry? Nothing, Roxy. Like I said, I have no idea what Eddie is upset about at all. Bullshit. You told me that Eddie claimed to have pictures of you and Janice. It means you and my sister did something to upset him. Roxy began to cry and continued, I can't believe that you could do something like that to me. I especially can't believe you could do this to my own sister. Roxy glared at me for a moment, then turned, grabbed her purse, and stormed out the door. As she walked away, Roxy screamed, I'm going to get to the bottom of this right now. If you had sex with Janice, our marriage is over. She jumped into her car and, tires squealing, also drove out of our house, driving too fast. Now I don't know what to do. I was shocked. I had no idea where all this came from. I was more angry at Roxy than Eddie. He was an asshole and I figured it would either blow over or it wouldn't. If not, it didn't bother me too much because I would never have become his friend if we weren't related by marriage. I was also very worried, but also a little angry at Roxy. What the hell is going on? Almost three hours later, Roxy returned home. I sat in the living room drinking beer, trying to figure out how to deal with the crap that had hit me today. Roxy was crying. She came and sat next to me and then said, Jerry, I'm sorry I left like that. I was scared and angry. I thought you were doing something bad to my sister. I went there to look at those pictures and kill that bitch if you messed with her. When I got there, Janice was sitting in the living room crying. All her old photo albums were scattered on the floor. Eddie was still not home. I didn't even knock on the door. I just burst into the house and started screaming at her. As I watched Janice, she collected the photos and put them back in her photo album. I saw the photographs she collected. Honey, these were pictures from when you took her out before and during school and when you came home on leave from the Navy. 
I can't believe these were the same photos that Eddie was so upset about. After she told me what the fuss was about, I helped her collect these photographs, and we talked a little. Eddie came home and was really drunk. He asked me what it was like to be married to an asshole like you. He yelled at Janice and accused her of being a disloyal bitch for not telling him she was your mistress. He wanted to know how often you dated her after he married her. We told him never, but I don't think he really believed us. He went into their bedroom and said that he better never catch you or it would all be over. He slammed the door. A few minutes later, we looked into the room and saw that he was sleeping. I tried to persuade her to come with me to our home. Jerry and I were afraid he would hurt her, but she didn't go. Oh, Jerry, I'm so sorry I yelled at you. I just remembered how you took her out somewhere before we started dating. I loved you for many years, and you dated my sister. I really thought I hated her for this. I was so angry at you that I could barely talk to you or be in the same room with you. Eddie brought back all those memories this morning, and the pain and anger returned. I'm so sorry, honey. Although I can't believe he didn't know you two had dated before. I wonder why he was so upset about those old photos. Well, now I know why Roxy was so rude to me back then. I think I could understand her feelings. I hugged her and told her it was okay. Honey, I love only you. I'm good to Janice because she's your sister. Hell, I guess I even like her. But there could never be anything more between us. We are like oil and water and you know it. We just don't get along very well. Roxy smiled and kissed me tenderly. She said, I know, honey. I love you too. Sometimes I'm so scared that I'll lose you. I know I'm not very pretty. Janice is beautiful and could always get any man she wanted. I used to invite guys over to my house, and they would spend the entire evening flirting with Janice if she was home. I guess I just remembered those times and came out half-cocked. I am so sorry. Well, from then on, almost every time Eddie, Janice, Roxy, and I got together, Eddie would tease Roxy and make fun of her. He always made her proposals that they needed to be together. He told her that he could truly turn her world around, if only she was a little tipsier. I had to be always close to her to keep him from trying to hit on her, flirt with her, or grope her. At least once or twice a month, good old Eddie would tell me, either when we spoke in person or on the phone, that since I couldn't do a man's job, he would be glad to come and take care of Roxy for me. I finally asked Roxy about it. Roxy, I said, what is this story about me not being good enough in bed anymore? If you have a problem with our lovemaking or want something that I'm not giving you, why didn't you talk to me about it? What the hell do you mean, Jerry? I never told you that I don't like the way you make love to me. Where did all this come from? I know you never told me that you didn't like the way I made love to you. You also never told me that you liked the way I made love to you. Hell, we never talk about sex at all. You never even tell me if I do something you like. How the hell do I know if you like what I do to you or not? You know damn well where that came from, too. I know you heard Eddie tell me that he would be willing to come and take care of you. You saw how we talked today at your parents' place. Roxy turned pale, then red. She raised her hands to her mouth and said, Oh, shit, honey, I'm sorry. I guess I really did cause it, but that's not what I meant. Remember how that bull kicked you in the groin and you spent a week in bed? I then really missed your caresses and dreamed of making love as quickly as possible. I was excited and a little nervous about this. Janice noticed this and decided to discuss it with me. I told her how glad I would be when you got better and could make real good love to me again. Eddie walked into the kitchen and grinned at me. He came up to me and put his hand on my shoulder, then tried to put it under my blouse. I ordered Eddie to stop and move away from me. He just grinned and said if you didn't do the job, he'd take care of me for you. He said it was only fair that he did that since you slept with Janice. Roxy, I never... I started to say that I had never had sex with her sister. But then I remembered that I did it once when I was in the Navy. Shit. Did this idiot know about this? Really, Roxy, too? I was sitting there trying to decide what to say when Roxy smiled. She put her hand on my forearm and said, Relax, honey. I know you had sex with Janice once when you were in the Navy. She told me about it that day when I was helping her with the photographs. I have to admit, it hurt 
but it wasn't like you were cheating on me. We weren't even dating then, but you were dating her. She also told me that this was your last date, and that's when she decided that you could never be more than just an acquaintance. She said neither of you really liked each other either. She said sex was just sex. There were no real fireworks for either of you. She knows you annoy each other, and so do I. I don't know how Eddie knew that. I'm guessing Janice must have told him or he was just ranting. I know she and I had sex while they were dating. Maybe he thinks she's done this on all her dates. I don't know. Anyway, honey, that's what he means by his chatter. And you will never have to worry about him or any other man as long as you remain the man I fell in love with when I was 13 and you were visiting my older sister. I have loved you all my life, and I trust you more than I can express in words. Well, for the next few months, I just put up with good old Eddie's crap and tried to be nice to him when fate or family matters brought us together. Eddie just didn't want to leave it alone. He continued to make comments to me. I guess he's tired of messing around with me with words. He upped the ante. Good old Eddie began making more suggestive remarks to Roxy. From time to time, he began propositioning Roxy and touching her inappropriately. One day at a family meeting, I got tired of it. I heard him propose to Roxy three times that day. He put his arm around her waist and tried to feel her breasts. I also saw him pat her ass twice. He made two comments to me about how he was going to meet Roxy and take care of her for me. To Roxy's credit, she stopped him every time and did it confidently and beautifully. But I was angry. I was upset that she didn't actually punch him in the face for it. That night when we returned home, I exploded. During Roxy's tirade about Eddie, I said, I've had enough of this asshole. I'm going to give him some of his own medicine. I'm telling you now, sweetheart, that from now on, every time he makes a comment to me about having sex with you, or if I even hear him say it to someone else and it gets back to me, I'm going to make the same remark to him. I'm going to tell him I'm going to see Janice, or at least I'm going to tell him I'm going to see her. I'm going to let him know what it's like to have someone constantly tell him that he can't take care of his own wife, and I'm going to do it for him. I'm going to touch or try to touch Janice the same way he touches you. This shit has to end one way or another. Honey, I don't think this is such a good idea. You know how jealous he can be. We all know he's just playing macho when he spews his trash. Please don't do this. No, it's a done deal. From now on, I will do as well as he does. No, and that's another problem I have with all of this. You're too lenient with him when he approaches you. I know you don't do anything with him, but I'm very angry at you for not stopping some of his behavior. For the next five months, every time I called Eddie and Janice at home or answered the phone, and this was one of them, I made the same inappropriate comments that Eddie made. If I had talked to good old Eddie, I would have suggested that he take care of Janice. At first he just ignored me, so I increased my efforts to give my best. I told Eddie how beautiful Janice's breasts were and how affectionate and active they were when I had sex with her that time. I asked if they were still as cute. I started patting Janice's ass when Eddie could see me. A couple of times I even accidentally touched her breasts. I touched her, hugged her, and when we talked, I tried to make it look like we were flirting. Janice seemed to distance herself from me and didn't like what was going on between us and our families. She also wanted Eddie and me to stop rivalry and stop pestering them with various stupid jokes. But Eddie didn't want to give in and continued to pester Roxy. I didn't like it, and I was forced to continue the rivalry. A couple of times Roxy asked me to stop touching Janice and propositioning her. Heck, even Janice asked me to stop doing things like that to her. I told her the same thing I told Roxy. I would stop as soon as Eddie stopped doing this to Roxy. Hell, Roxy's dad even talked to me about the inappropriate things I said to Janice. At this point, I lost my temper. I said, listen, Ron, I love Roxy to death. I would never cheat on her. And you know that if you know me at all. I'm also sick of Eddie and his flirting with her. I told Roxy, Janice, and Eddie that I would stop what I was doing and saying as soon as Eddie stopped doing the same to Roxy. Why didn't you say or do anything to Eddie about this? Well, son, you know Eddie. He's just pulling your string. What you're doing is like pouring gasoline on a fire. You need to be the bigger person here and stop showing Eddie that you're really interested in Janice. Bullshit, Dad. 
He started it. Roxy and I both tried to ignore it and tell him to stop before I started paying him back. When he stops, I will stop. That's the whole result. He should keep his damn hands off my wife and stop putting makeup on her, and I'll stop doing the same to his wife. One day, we had to go to another family meeting. Eddie brought the beer and handed it to me. I was surprised because he wasn't usually very friendly. I was hoping that maybe he was ready to bury the hatchet. Then he grinned and said, That's it, old man. You've got enough for today, and I'll give Roxy what she needs. I know she needs a real man after putting up with you for so long. It's just a matter of time before I get around to it. I saw red, the limit beyond which you cannot cross. I was angry. I wanted to punch Eddie in the face, but then I changed my mind. All I did was lean towards him and say, well, I'd be worried if I thought you were a sexy enough man to seduce her, but you're not. After I was with Janice last time, I understood why you don't satisfy her. I knew your male instrument was small, but I had no idea that it was only 12 centimeters. Hell, if Roxy ever sees this, she'll probably die laughing. I wanted to tell him something else offensive, but I didn't have time. Eddie exploded. He hit me in the face and ran away. I was still on the ground when he started yelling at Janice. You're a cheating slut. I've had enough of you and this idiot. You can have him and any other man you can get. I'm leaving here. Half the family stood and watched, while the other half ran towards me to see if I was okay. Of course, that's when I started to feel awkward about the whole thing. I wondered if I had gone too far. Needless to say, it ruined the party. Roxy was so angry with me. She really helped me get up, but when she found out what the problem was, she attacked me. She had never yelled at me like that before. On the way home, it was completely quiet. We were visiting her parents, and she insisted that we take Janice to her house. During the entire 30-minute drive, no one said a word. Roxy spent the night on the couch and didn't even speak to me when she served me breakfast the next morning. I am involved in farming, so when I went to the house for lunch, I was again faced with the silent treatment. The only time she spoke to me first was absolutely necessary over the next three days. Unless something I said to her required a response, Roxy never responded when I told her anything. On Thursday, I came home for lunch, and Roxy had already left. I made a sandwich and went back to the field to work. That evening, I returned home to a dark house. There was still no sign of Roxy. I called her parents to see if they knew where she was. Her mother said, both girls are here. How could you do this to them, Jerry? Roxy doesn't want to talk to you. Please just leave us alone. I started going to the Old Mill Cafe in Wilson's Mill for breakfast and dinner. Of course, in the first few days when I came here, there were a lot of jokes about me. Eddie filed for divorce from Janice for adultery, citing the fact that I was her lover. She and Roxy were living with their parents again. Half the guys thought it was a great joke that I was another man and never even touched Janice's naked skin after she got married. The other half of the men thought I dipped the wick into Janice and got caught. Most women were disgusted with me for cheating on Roxy with her sister or angry because of the prank I played on Eddie. It seems that those who were on my side were the ones who heard what he told me and Roxy to take care of her, since I couldn't. They thought my actions were justified. Those who were upset with me thought that what I did was terrible. I ruined a good marriage and deserved to suffer. Some people thought Roxy should divorce me for being an asshole. Others thought that she should divorce me because they were sure that I had actually cheated on her with her sister. Almost a month passed before Roxy returned to my home. We had a hard time the rest of the summer because I was such an ass to poor old Eddie. Eddie and Janice actually got divorced. He could never provide any evidence that I did anything inappropriate with Janice. All he had was a couple of friends who testified that I repeatedly told him I was going to come over and take care of her because he wasn't man enough. Of course, Janice produced documents and witnesses saying he did the same thing to me. Janice also provided evidence of how Eddie behaved towards her. She got a divorce from Eddie for his mental cruelty towards her. The judge was upset with both of us men. We both got a royal beating in court for being such assholes. Now, a year after her divorce, Janice is enjoying her life again. I'm at a family meeting again and can't believe what I'm hearing. 
Janice is talking in the kitchen with Roxy, her mother, and her other sister. I never thought I'd be happy again when Eddie kicked me out, but I have to admit that last year was almost perfect. I didn't realize how much his damn flirting with other women and complaining about me dating Jerry bothered me. It was pure heaven not having to listen to his bullshit day after day. I was so upset when Jerry did what he did that I never thought that maybe Eddie deserved it. I just laughed at what Eddie told you, Roxy. Because Eddie is Eddie. Roxy, I'm so sorry that I let him put you through all this. I was mad at Jerry for the way he acted because he went out of his way to break Eddie's chain. But now I really think I'm better off than when I was married. To Eddie. Money is a little tight, but I'm happy now. Jerry and I still don't like each other, and I'll never be really close to him, honey. But it's time for you to forget about it and try to fix your marriage too, Roxy. Jerry loves you to death. But can't you see, honey? You're doing to Jerry what Eddie did to me, only differently. You need to come to terms with what he did and said to Eddie and work on making him happy. Otherwise, you will end up getting divorced too. Considering how much you've always loved this man, I can't believe this would be good for you. Roxy was crying, and I heard her say through her sobs, I know, but he was such an asshole about it. I just can't get over the fact that he continued to abuse Eddie, even when I told him he needed to forget about it. Didn't you tell me he said he'd stop when Eddie did? Honey, he couldn't fight Eddie. We were family. You know how everyone would feel about him if he picked a fight with Eddie. He tried his best to protect you from Eddie's moronic remarks. I know in the end I was hurt, and I know I was mad at him for bothering me, but he didn't do anything that Eddie wouldn't do to you. For that matter, Roxy, why didn't you attack Eddie for saying and doing things like that to you? I don't know, Janice. Probably because I kind of enjoyed it. I didn't like it, but it felt good knowing that Eddie kind of wanted me. I would never have let it go any further, but to be honest, his words didn't hit me as much as Jerry did. So here it is, friends. This is how I came to be thought of as an asshole, and how I almost lost my marriage to an asshole ex-friend. Do I regret doing this? No, not at all. I'm sorry I upset Roxy and ruined my marriage a little. I guess I even feel a little sorry for Janice, but honestly, I don't care much about her, so what the hell? If she weren't my wife's sister, I wouldn't care. I'm still a little angry at Roxy for her part in all this, but Janice is right in what she said. We love each other to death and we need to heal this wound before it gets so bad that we can't. If Roxy doesn't take the right step soon, I guess I'll have to try to find a way back for both of us. I'd really like to go back to where we were before that asshole Eddie started stirring the pot. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.